Hey, so I was at work the other day validating patient results, like I do, and I noticed in one of the patient's clinical details it just said, hiccups. And I remember thinking, oh my god, why are you wasting NHS resources by coming to the doctor with hiccups? Your blood work is fine, get out. But I had a quick little research and found out that hiccups actually can be quite sinister in certain scenarios. But before we get into all of that, what actually is a hiccup? A hiccup is simply an involuntary contraction of the diaphragm. And once triggered, this reflex is followed by a closure of the vocal cords, about 0.25 seconds later, which results in the classic bick sound. Hiccups can repeat several times per minute, and the time in between hiccups is normally relatively constant. There's often no obvious reason why you get hiccups, but some people find certain things trigger their hiccups, such as stress, strong emotions like being excited or laughing, or eating or drinking. In rare cases, it can be a sign of a serious problem. Hiccups can present with various conditions like kidney failure, MS, meningitis, or even following damage to the vagus nerve following surgery. But there was a case of chronic hiccups that made it onto the news. A guy from Britain was reported to have hiccuped once every two seconds for 12 hours a day, adding up to 1,800 hiccups an hour, 21,600 a day, and nearly 7.9 million a year. He unsurprisingly had difficulty talking, sleeping, and eating as a result of the constant hiccuping. And it got to a point where he was forced to stop driving as he was afraid of crashing. He went to the doctors, as you would, well, as I hope you would, but despite blood tests and scans, he was left undiagnosed. But because of all of his incessant hiccuping, he was actually flown to Tokyo by a Japanese television company who wanted to make a documentary about him and his hiccuping. And while he was there, he had an MRI scan which discovered a 1.2 centimeter growth on his brainstem. In a letter to pass on to British doctors, the Japanese specialist who saw him wrote, less than a handful of surgeons would touch this tumor. If it cannot be operated on, it needs radiotherapy or chemotherapy to save this boy's life. It was thought that the pressure from the slow growing tumor, which luckily turned out to be benign, affected his nervous system, triggering the nonstop hiccups. And despite being warned that the tumor was practically inoperable, he flew home for brain surgery. The operation removed 60% of his tumor and he reported that his hiccups had pretty much disappeared. However, after the surgery, he experienced numbness on his left side and he had difficulty with his coordination. And of course, of course, we could not do a video about hiccups without mentioning the man that set the record for the longest attack of hiccups ever. Charles Osborne from Iowa started hiccuping in 1922 and continued hiccuping until the year before he died in 1990. So he hiccuped for a grand total of 68 years. In an old interview with People magazine from 1982, Charles recalled how an accident when he was 29 years old resulted in his lifetime of hiccuping. He mentioned in the interview, I was hanging a 350 pound hog for butchering. I picked it up and then I fell down. I felt nothing, but the doctor said later that I busted a blood vessel the size of a pin in my brain. The result, according to a doctor that had treated him, is that he destroyed a small area in the brainstem that inhibits the hiccup response. Charles is said to have hiccuped over 430 million times in his lifetime. While sleeping, the hiccups did use to subside and he used to have them um, 40 of them per minute, which usually reduced to 20 per minute during his wake time. And this was because he learned how to breathe in between hiccups that helped suppress the sound of them and he learned this at Mayo Clinic. And as he had such a big media presence appearing on Ripley's Believe It or Not and various talk shows, he received over 4,000 sympathy letters and recommendations for home remedies. But sadly, none of these worked. But he did lead a relatively normal life despite his hiccups. He was married twice, had eight kids, and lived until he was 97. This video was brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service founded by John Hendricks, the founder of the Discovery Channel. And it offers over 2,000 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. This includes a show about CERN and the University of California Santa Barbara's collaboration in the search for the elusive substance that physicists and astronomers believe holds the universe together, dark matter. A limited access starts at just $2.99 a month, but for all of you guys, the first 30 days are completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com forward slash science with Katie and use the promo code science with Katie. So go check it out and tell me what you think and a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon and thank you for watching. Bye!